Hi everyone, it is Wednesday, September 21st, 2016, and this is episode 89 of Sarah Nova Crafts. I'm your host, Jessica. I can be found as Sarah Nova on Ravelry and Twitter, and as Sarah Nova Crafts on Instagram and on Twitch, though I haven't broadcast anything yet, but I did create a uh, screen name for Twitch. So I'm Sarah, Nova, I'm Sarah Nova Crafts there as well. Um, so a little bit of business, to, uh, wait, I'm getting my whole thing out of order. <laughs> it's one of those mornings. If you are a new viewer, thank you very much for watching. If you are a returning viewer, thank you very much for coming back. Likes, subscribes, comments are all appreciated. And of course, I just interrupted my own spiel. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so, um, a little bit of business before I get down to talking about whips, because I have no foes. Um, no VKN tomorrow night unless someone else wants to host for me. It is Kevin and I's fifth anniversary, and so I am not going to be online. We're going to watch, we're going to sit home and, like, watch movies or something. Um, we don't necessarily feel the need to go out, but, um, I am going to spend the night focused on him because it is our anniversary. So, I am not going to be online, really, at all tomorrow night. So, if somebody wants to host a VKN for me, they are welcome to do it. But I will not be hosting tomorrow night. Just FYI, getting that out there. So moving on to actual knitting crafting stuff, and I'll chatter about other stuff at the end. Because I realize I've been doing it backwards. I've been chattering about stuff first, and then showing the knitting later. And I'm like, I realize people might just want to see my knitting. And they don't necessarily want to know everything else that's going on and have to skip to the knitting. So I'm going to do the knitting first, and then I'll chat about everything else afterwards. So, um, whips. Whips, 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 whips. So, what there is is, oh, right, okay, sorry. Something popped up on my computer. Yay, closing notification windows. Um, so, I have been working on my stone cutter as the ball rolls away from me. There we go. Having the ball make an escape means that if I didn't pick it up now, I'd be in trouble later. So, picked it up now. I've managed to make a decent bit of progress on this. I've done about another inch and a half or so. Yeah, pulling up the back. Here we go. This is, you can see the marker, where I've been, where I am. So I will now move the marker. And, um, what's coming? So I've actually been wanting to work on this a little bit, but, um, I don't know. It's, my knitting mojo is finally coming back. It was gone for a little while. But now, um, now it seems to be coming back, which is good. So I also, um, have been working on, oh, I don't have it in here. Okay, it's not in here. I will just tell you about it then, um, because I've shown it in the last few episodes. Um, I've put about another inch on my trillion. Uh, but, um, it basically looks the same, just a little bit bigger. The shawl will be finished eventually. I'm just writing down what I'm talking about which is always good, um, and, uh, then I also have, um, didn't crochet at all this week, I just realized that I have not touched the blanket, which is sitting, like, right there, right, but I haven't touched it, so, no progress on the blanket, um, worked on my trillion, worked on my stone cutter, oh, and I did cast on a new project, I know, bad of me, but, but, and this ties right into stash, so I'm just gonna go from whips to stash with this thing, um, I got asked to make a couple of samples for Springtide Farm. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you will have heard about them from last year when I made, last year this time, when I made some samples for them as well. I made a couple of scarves um, for them. They are a um, cashmere farm in Bremen, Maine. So that's their logo, Springtide Farm. Springtide Farm, they're in Bremen, Maine. It's springtidefarm.com. And this is um, some of their uh, three-ply fingering weight that they sent me to make two hats out of. So I have this plum, they're calling it Heather Tweed, but it's really a purpley color, though it's not showing up on camera as purple. Oh, if you look down here, this is close. That's wrong, this is close. Um, and then this Tawny, this was actually called Tawny, and these are one ounce skeins, 132 yards each at $40 a skein, because it's 100% pure cashmere. It's a lot. So I have two of each that I got. I got two of these and two of these. However, this one has already been balled up, because I started 
one hat. <laughs> I've done like three rows on it, but I have started it. Um, for Rhinebeck. So these are going to be delivered at Rhinebeck for Rhinebeck. So if you're going to Rhinebeck, they have a booth and you should totally check them out because it's so soft. I'll do this. I'll rub this one on my face. They also sent me a, um, where did it go? I just had it. They also sent me a sample hat. So this is actually what I'm making. Don't know if you can see the cables. There we go. You can see them there. Um, and it's actually a really nice, just like beanie. So they want me, they want this color hat, because that's what I'm making this same hat out of this, to match in size, which is, this seems like a good adult size. It fits me. I mean, it doesn't take into account my hair, but I just have a lot of hair. But oh my god, it feels so nice. <laughs> Gotta love cashmere, right? So, um, and this is the, uh, uh, this is the hiker hat. It's two skeins of the fingering weight. Um, and the pattern is not yet available on Ravelry. Hopefully it will be soon. Um, and then this one is going to be a TAM, which I don't have a picture of because the pattern, I'm basically testing the pattern and making a sample at the same time. So, it should be interesting. But the, uh, the, uh, the hiker hat has been tested, so I can just follow that pattern blissfully and uh, not have to worry about it too much. So that should be good. And that's my stash is the, the Springtide Farm Cashmere. Um, and it's hiker hat. I'm making my show notes as I go this time because I didn't make them earlier. There we go. Um, so that's it for crafting content at 7 minutes in. <laughs> now I'm just going to ramble about the previous week for a bit. So um, I uh, uh, co-hosted on Saturday the After Hours Knitting Group podcast. That was fun with Tanya and Jen. Um, Jen, who is also of the Uncreative Crafter podcast, Tanya, who, um, she's a mod in, like, everyone's podcast group. She's a mod in my podcast group, she's a mod in Jen's group, she's a mod in the Two Tangled Skeins group, she's a mod in, um, I think the Canadian Knitter group, she's a mod in the Cat Lady podcast group, I mean, she's our whole group of, like, people that I know. Yeah, she's like a mod in everyone's group. <laughs> we finally convinced her to start podcasting, so she is, like, the primary co-host of the After Hours Nanny Group and the rest of us kind of switch out. Um, I won't be co-hosting again this weekend because I'm going to be at King Richard's Fair. Um, so King Richard's is a Renaissance Fair in Carver, Mass that runs from Labor Day weekend through to almost the end of October every weekend. And we are going this Saturday and the weather is supposed to be actually really nice. And by really nice, I mean in the 60s, which means we can wear our big heavy costumes and not die of heat stroke. <laughs> Which is always good, because Kevin's got 30 pounds, 40 pounds of chainmail he wears. You know, 40 pounds when you have the padding on underneath and the gambus and over top. And all. It's like 40 pounds of stuff. I have like 15, 20 pounds of stuff, because I have the big, huge gown with the corset and the big petticoats. And yeah, um, a lot of stuff. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's just, so it's nice that it's going to be cooler so that we don't sweat ridiculously and lose 10 pounds worth of weight in the day. <laughs> so that's always fun. That's where I'm going to be this Saturday, so I can't co-host again. But I will probably co-host in the future, so keep an eye out for that. Also, in a week and a half, as in October 1st, I will be at Vermont Sheep and Wool. That is the Saturday. Vermont Sheep and Wool is both Saturday and Sunday of that weekend, so it's October 1st and 2nd. But I will be there on the 1st, which is the Saturday. I'm just going up for the day. There is no official podcaster meetup, but if you go and you see me, Feel free to come over and say hi. I will happily chat with you, happily talk. You know, we're cool, right? Just come say hi. I will probably wear my big Rockefeller that you see in the title card for my episode. I will probably have that. It's very distinctive and um, make me easy to spot. So, let's see. Um, other news. Uh, I might have to change the day I podcast on or something. I don't know. Because I got a job. Now, it's not necessarily the uh, white-collar, 40-hour-a-week office job I wanted, but it's a job with, uh, I'm just going to come out and say Tivana. Um, so it's going to be Tivana. It's going to be working in their store at my local mall, but I genuinely really like tea. I'm a tea drinker. I don't drink coffee at all. I love tea. I've been drinking tea for years. And you know what? Tivana is a company I could actually, you know, get behind and work for, hence why I applied for the job. So I interviewed and all that fun stuff last week, and now this week... 
holy crap, I need to turn down my screen brightness. I just realized it's washing me out really badly. So much better. Um, so, uh, interviewed last week. This week, they are running paperwork and everything, and hopefully I can start Monday. But of course, depending on the hours, so they open at 10 a.m., but it's now 11 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I would have to, like, get up and record, like, in the first 10 minutes, like, of the 8 o'clock hour to get a podcast out before I might have to go into fork. So we'll see. Um, there's no guarantee I'll even be working next week. Um, but they want me to start the 26th, which is Monday, if the background check clears. So keep your fingers crossed for me. That would be good. Uh, but yes, that is very good news. I'm very happy. I'm very excited about that. Um, and I got the call for that on Sunday, that, yes, I'd gotten the job. They wanted me for the position, and I was hired. So... That was a, it was a very good Sunday. Also on Sunday, um, I went to go see... None of you have probably ever heard of Sam Glazier before, but he is a Jewish singer um, from L.A. Here's one of his CDs, because I got a bunch of them on Sunday. Because Sunday, um, the Jewish Federation in Manchester was having um, him for their annual meeting as like a concert afterwards, and so my mom and I went. I have been a fan of his music for almost 20 years. And I can say that because he came to our synagogue in 98, 99? I was in fifth grade. So it was either 1998 or 1999. Um, and did a concert. And all of us school kids got to be his chorus singing in the background, which was really fun. And he came... Um, once more a few years later, and then we've seen him a couple other times when he's been in the area. Because he went to school in the Boston area, so he's actually rather fond of New England, so he tends to come back. And so we see him, like he was down in Peabody once, and we went and saw him there, and then um, yeah, we saw him at the Federation this past weekend. It was really nice. I'll put some pictures in at the end. Um, and maybe a couple of um, audio clips, because he does a really funny version of good, of uh, Great Balls of Fire. The song, you know, Goodness Gracious, Great Balls of Fire. Yeah, he does a version that is Goodness Gracious, My Sukkah's on Fire. <laughs> Which, if you know what a sukkah is, is absolutely hilarious. If you don't know what a sukkah is, a sukkah is a wooden construction that Jews make for the holiday of Sukkot. And because you are supposed to go sleep out under the stars. So you make this, it's basically a, um, what is that word? Not a cupola. Not a couple. It's not the word I'm looking for. Though it's basically one of those like trellis constructions people put on porches, where like it's not really a roof, but you have like trellises and like you know, like you can grow ivy and vines and stuff on it. It's basically that, except temporary, and you only have it up for like a week a year, and um, you're supposed to sleep out under the stars. And so they're usually made of wood. So wood being on fire is tragic and hilarious at the same time. So you can see the humor now that I've explained it a little bit. Um, but he faced, he did a nearly two-hour show on Sunday night, and it was great. And um, he actually, uh, um, if I can speak, he actually um, had some, some of the kids there come up and sing with him, and he asked me to uh, do Facebook Live for him with it, because um, what it was was that um, I was, like, the only person... <laughs> In my age demographic, who was not dealing with small children or something, um, so he asked me to take his phone and do Facebook Live for him. So I recorded that for him on Sunday. That was fun. Um, but he's got very good music, and it is religious, so I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I really like it. And he's a very good singer. He's very energetic. Um, he plays the piano, and he sings very well. And I just really enjoy it. And so, lastly, I have been reading books. And by books, I mean Kindle books, because, yeah. Um, so one of them was a free book I got, because I get the um, BookBub, uh, I get the BookBub e newsletter. Sorry, I'm pulling something up on the tablet so I can show you. Um, and uh, uh, so I got one. Um, it's called uh, The One There. Thirst in the Center was the first one I read this past week. It's by Claire Farrell. Um, and it's the first in like a six-part series, and I'm not going to read the rest of it because I was just like, Because the main character is this like half-vampire that's fighting her urge for blood, and then lots of crap happens, and I was just like, really? Really? So I read that one because, well, I started it, and I might as well finish it so I know what happened in the end. But I was not, I was not impressed. 
the other book I read, and I read the entire thing yesterday, was The Sweetest Dark by Shanna Abe, Abe something. Abel. Abe, no, Shanna Abe. The Sweetest Dark. Um, and that one um, actually came from my library as an ebook borrow. And um, it's basically about this girl who she's named Eleanor, but she her nickname's Laura, L O R A. Um, and she's just Jones because she was picked up off the streets at 10 and nobody claimed her, so they put her in an orphanage. And this is um, like uh, uh, the most of the story takes place during the beginnings of World War One in England. Um, she ends up out in the countryside at a school for girls as a charity. Um, student where at least one student a year is brought in on charity to give them a proper education and so et cetera. So she goes there thinking she's just going to train to be like a governess, which would be a better life than, you know, ending up in a factory or on the streets. And lots of crap happens, and it turns out she has magic, and if you're interested, I don't want to spoil it, it's a YA novel. There is a bit of a love triangle, and I was kind of disappointed in the end, but I'm going to read the second book anyways. Because I want to know what happens because none of the questions were answered <laughs> by the end of the well, There was like one question that got answered by the end of this book. But most of it was just like, nope, no idea what's going on. So, should be interesting to read the second one. Um, it was, it's The Sweetest Dark. Like, it's kind of a paranormal romance, kind of a fantasy book. The romance isn't the main plot. The main plot is Laura figuring out what she actually is. But at the same time, the romance is a big part of the plot. And I'm usually not too big on romance, but this one I was able to deal with. Other than a little bit of BS at the end, where I was just like, really? But I won't spoil it in case you actually want to read the book. So, I think that's about it. I am done talking. So, like I said, no VKN tomorrow night. Um, but I will hold one next week. So, I hope you all have a good night. And I will... Good day. Good, good week. Good whatever. Um, and I will see you next week. Bye!